Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Michael here, Shy City Yacker. I appreciate you for joining me on this video. Couldn't get out in the water today. We've got a strong Northeast blow on Lake Michigan, so we're sitting it out. But I still wanted to do something here to help you guys out, especially because we are now really into the summer uh, fishing season on Lake Michigan. Uh, what exactly does it mean? How does that differ from kind of what we experienced in the spring? Well, in the spring, these fish are a lot closer to shore, a lot of flatline tro trolling out of the uh, crankbaits, out of your kayak. It's it's a time of year where if you're in a kayak like me, it's like, it's like shooting fish in the barrel, right? Like you really can't not go without limiting out. They're just in close. It's very easy to get out there. Don't have to go far. So out of a kayak, it's a great time. Seeing guys limit out, going crazy. You feel like you've mastered the lake until we get to summertime. And that's really when it separates kind of like the experienced guys from the guys that are just kind of still learning. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm trying to help you guys get on some fish. I'm always learning. I am by no means a, I've mastered this. There's guys that are, I've met that have been on the water for 30 plus years that are still learning themselves and they charter every day. So keep an open mind and uh, I'm gonna do my best today to share with you why you want to incorporate flasher flies into your programming on Lake Michigan, especially now because we are in the summer pattern. What is that, exactly does that mean? Well, it means that on the lake, we now have a established thermocline. That surface water, I was just out the other day, surface water, even at 80, 90 feet, was close to 70 degrees. It's pretty, pretty warm, especially for salmon that like it in the mid 40s up to the mid 50 range, right? Um, and you'll see on your fish finder, you'll see a clear line at some depth. Sometimes it's at 20 feet, or at least that's where I saw it last. Uh, it can vary in the water column. And that is that line where you got the uh, warmer top layer of water meets that colder layer of water. And you'll, you'll get that thermocline line. That's what that means. And for a lot of you guys that are, are, are still learning fish finders, if you go onto the lake and you just see a line across your fish finder, and you think your fish finder is broken, it's not it's probably the thermocline. And what that means for you is, you're gonna kinda wanna fish below it and you can still put some presentations above it. Um, that thermocline is important because you got bait fish uh, that, that feed in there. That's a, that's a really interesting part of the water where you get this mix and you have bait fish feeding in there, bait fish feeding on the little things, that they, the organisms that they eat. And of course the bigger fish are around the bait fish. Um, it's really cool when you see on, on your fish finder, the thermocline, you'll see bait balls, and you'll start to see fish underneath them or around them, staying close to them, right? Cause that's their food source. Anyway, when we get into, into that time of year on Lake Michigan, we did, when you get a clear thermocline, start, it's a good time to start running your flasher flies. Uh, we're in the summer season now. Why are flasher flies so effective? Well, uh, let's talk about it. I'm just gonna grab one here just to kind of explain this part of it. Um, these are eight inch flashers. They make them in uh, bigger sizes, uh, 11 inches. Even we got the big paddle ones or like ginormous. But in the kayak, eight inches is about as big as you wanna go because these um, uh, drag in the water. There's a lot of resistance in the water from it because it's, it's turning that water. Uh, it adds drag and that drag is what you're gonna have to paddle or pedal with. So it's, it's, it's a lot more work when you're pulling uh, multiple flashers in the water. You'll feel it. I'm, I'm in my autopilot uh, old town now with the motor, you know, with the Minn Kota motor. And when I put multiple flashes in the water, I, I can feel the difference, you know, and I can see the work my trolling motor has to do because it's dragging these things in the water, right? The weight and the board. Um, so it's a lot more work, but what's different about these than say your, your, um, typical coho rig with your Dodgers is that a flasher is also, uh, it also rotates. Some people call them rotators, old school, but flashers basically rotate around. The front end kind of stays centered in a, a way, a, a bit, and the back end just kind of flips around, right? This back end is just kind of twirling around in the back, all right? And that's why they're called rotators. Uh, they're called flashers because obviously when, the, when this comes around, it flashes, goes up on the other side. So as it rotates, as the light in the water is hitting it from different angles, it's flashing in the water. So it's what they're called flashers or rotators. I have a variety of styles here that I'll talk about. They're effective because they're a big fish calling magnet. These flashers in the water, again, 
They're flashing out that color as it rotates. You've got the very clear water on Lake Michigan. That light penetration goes down deep. You believe it or not, it gets really down in there. And uh, even if your stuff is down 60, 70 feet, there's still light penetrating down there that it's enough with these UV tapes on here to reflect and flash off uh, down there. And that's what attracts the fish closer into your presentation. They, they feel that disturbance and they see the flashing. It brings them in closer to your rig, at which point they're gonna go ahead and see a fly behind it doing its thing. And at that point uh, is when they decide whether or not they're gonna take the presentation, fish on, and hopefully it's a big giant for you. Uh, these will tend to pull your bigger kings, your bigger coho, suspended lake trout. Um, really, really effective here. Um, so that's kind of an overview of what a flasher is. It's what imparts the action onto the fly itself. Uh, where a dodger wobbles in the water and your fly kind of wobble, you know, does like this kind of a motion that, that uh, is in line with that wobble. Uh, because the flasher rotates around, what happens is your, your fly kind of does like this brief kind of pulses. So now that we've kind of broke down the general idea of what a flasher is, how it works, what it does, why it's important, uh, let's kind of go over this small collection that I have here of flashers. There's a, quite a few different brands that make them. Um, you got Pro Troll, you've got, uh, you've got uh, Stinger, uh, we've got uh, Dreamweaver here, uh, we've got Hot Spots over here, but they're generally all the kind of same premise, right? So when you go into your local uh, tackle shop and you're looking at their wall of flashers here, uh, don't get lost into the brands. What you're going to want to look at are some of the colors. And what I'm going to show you now are some of the ones that I feel are your must-haves, right? These are going to be the colors that most boats and folks will have in their, in their flasher collection that they're going to be putting in the water. Uh, they're tried and true, and they're good all-around uh, flashers. And one of the first that comes to mind is going to be your NBK. This right here is UV Chrome NBK. As you can see, the backside is chrome. On the front side, you still got chrome here, along with the traditional MBK colorway, which is your black, green, and your uh, UV like white tape. Very, very effective. Uh, I really like the UV and the chromes, or uh, well, the chromes rather, on sunny, sunny days. We, when you got those bluebird skies, or just the sun is penetrating through, uh, I really like chrome in general. Uh, to kind of go with it, there's the white UV MBK. Uh, as you can tell, what's different is that the paddle itself, or the flasher itself, is made out of a white board. Uh, but you still kind of got that same colorway here, white UV tape here, uh, black and green. I like these on overcast days. The white boards, I like on overcast days. The chrome ones on, uh, on very sunny days. It's not to say they won't work on, you know, opposite kind of conditions. But uh, I usually start, depending on what it looks like, I'll start either chrome or white boards, uh, depending on what the condition looks like. Early in the morning, I'm gonna go with whites and stuff when that sun hasn't come over the horizon just yet. Um, so NBK in general, really, really good. This one right here, you cannot go wrong with. It's very simple. It's just a metallic chrome. Both sides are this metallic tape. This is a Pro Troll brand. It just gets the job done. It's very simple. If you're looking for one that you need to have, you can't go wrong with this one. Next, we have Magic Man right here. And as you can see here, it's another chrome one. Uh, it's pretty simple. You've got the red eye dot here. You got a black strip come along with, with dots alongside of it. You got UV tape here. Backside is chrome. Another good one to have in your collection. Uh, good for those sunny days. A magic man don't forget about this one i really like a lot of yellows in, in my uh uh flashers just me i got confidence in them uh this one is a mountain dew and as you can see it's that that yellow chartreuse kind of looks like the mountain dew drink color which is hence the name mountain dew uh and then on the back side it's a metallic it's on a chrome board can't go wrong with a mountain dew there's uh, each each of these uh brands pro troll and the, and the hot spots and the and the uh, Dreamweaver, they all have a version of a Mountain Dew with something or other. Uh, you really can't go wrong when you have like that yellow Mountain Dew on a flasher. So, so take a look and see uh, which ones might have that. If you think it might work for you, go ahead and pick it up. All right, next we have this one right here, Super Frog. Really like this one, really effective here. Uh, the backside is, is a chrome and you've got like this white metallic uh, kind of uh, tape on the backside. Uh, the main side, 
is a painted color. As you can see, chartreuse black greens on here. Uh, I like this one, it works really well. I think simply for the fact that you've got like this, two, two things happening. Uh, you've, you've got this painted color side going through the water, and then when it flips around to the back side, you've got the chrome flash. So you're getting like these, th this alternating kind of thing happening where you're getting some flash and then you're getting some color. Works really, really good. Next, we'll go with an all white, very simple. And I know these might not look as sexy as some of the other ones here, right? When we talk about the, the metallic one, it's, it's metallic. Doesn't look as, as cool and interesting as some of these other kind of designs, but these are effective. Don't sleep on, on some of these, what I would say, the plain ones, the simple ones. Uh, this is just a white, white board. Uh, with the um, kind of white little boy, little boy blue um, reflective tape on here. Really, really good. Really like these here. Put them down deep. You can also put these with some spinning glows for lake trout to do well. Uh, but don't sleep on the all white. It's really good. Check that one out. Now, I've shown you some of the typical 8-inch flashers. Let's talk about the Dream, Dreamweaver offering uh, because they make a distinctly different kind of a flasher. Uh, these are called Spin Doctors. Now, as you can tell, especially compared to these 8 inches, very different design. Very, very different design. And this has a completely different action, more importantly here. Now, as you can see uh, on the board here, you have two fins. And what's great about Spin Doctors is that these are great at slow speeds. These are very speed tolerant. Guys over on the eastern side of, uh, of Lake Michigan, uh, over in, on the Michigan side, uh, swear by these. And, and a lot of guys troll these exclusively over some of the, the paddles that we talked about. Uh, but these are great because they're very speed tolerant. And out of the kayak, honestly, uh, these might be better for us, to be honest with you, because we are going in various speeds. We don't have autopilot to keep us at a certain speed all the time. I know when I was trolling out of a pedal kayak and a Hobie, there's times where you're going 2.3 and you might slow up your pedal and next thing you know, you look down, you're at 1.9. So there's a lot of variation in our, our pedal speeds. So maybe these are the way to go. It's something that now, I'm, as I'm talking about this with you guys, I'm thinking about myself, uh, but I, I do have a motor and I'm able to keep my speed more consistent. Uh, maybe it's something to think about for the rest of you guys and are paddling and pedaling. Um, so the way this thing is designed, very different. You have two holes in the front. Uh, the first hole in the front, you wanna have your clip in here if you are going faster. There's a second hole behind it. And if you're gonna go slower speeds, go ahead and put that, the uh, snap swivel on that back one. On the back side of this, on the fin part, you have two holes here, one on the top and the bottom. Uh, it's the fin side hole to make it easier and then the non-fin side hole. Uh, when out of the packaging, the snap swivel that's gonna tie off to your fly is connected to the fin side hole, uh, which this has less action on this side. If you were to plug up the snap swivel to the non-fin side hole, it's gonna impart more action to your fly. Most times, folks are just leaving it straight in the less action hole, which is on the fin side, and you're fine. But as always, Experiment, see maybe they want something more aggressive one day. Uh, pop the holes, put it over there, and see if that gets you bit, okay? Also, what's different about the uh, Spin Doctors is that you have two blades, two fins on all of these. And that's very different from some of your Pro Trolls and some of the other brands on the regular paddles, rotators, flashers here, that just have one fin. And, and that's just because this is what allows the Spin Doctor to work well at slower speeds because uh, these two fins uh, catches more water so it allows it to work better at slower speeds, all right? So that's how a Spin Doctor works and how it's designed. Uh, this one that I have here is a really popular color. It's called Coho Killer. Obviously, it looks really good. It's a pretty cool colorway. Um, if you can find it, I like it. Grab it. Looks good. Works well. Uh, inside, you've got like an orange UV kind of a tape. And then on the this side, is a, it's, a painted, it's a painted color, all right? Now, the way the spin doctor works in the water, it's very different from a flasher, where the flasher, that back end kind of just rotates over itself. The spin doctor actually does full 360 rotation. It just keeps going in a loop like this in the water. And in that kind of movement, the fly behind it is swimming. It's almost like a, it's a real cool, you know, when you get one of these, if you get one of these, put it in the water next to you, and just pull it and look at it, see how it works. 
It's really interesting to kind of get to know how these presentations work. But that's what's different about the spin doctors over your typical flasher boards here. So they give you a different action to your fly. Obviously it looks different. So these boards give you a lot more flexibility compared to our standard flashers here. I showed you the coho color one out of the spin doctor. Uh, another one you can't go wrong with. Again, it's just a plain white board with the white reflective like crinkled uh, tape. Uh, and there's another version of this one that I recommend, which is the white with the clear UV tape on the inside, which is really, really good. Uh, I like those. So these are the spin doctors that I'm currently using. There's plenty of more out there and I'll probably expand uh, into those more myself because I, I do think these might be maybe better for us in the kayak. I'm gonna experiment some more, kind of report back uh, how that goes for me. Anyway, let's continue to talk here about these flashers because um, I have a variety of colors that I like. We've got green UV, uh, UV green jeans here. We've got yellow uh, UV green jeans here. Uh, we've got Mountain Dew. I think I already mentioned this, maybe not. We've got Mountain Dew here. It's got a chrome uh, metallic back. I really like these. It's really good to go. Um, I forgot the name of this one. These are a little bit harder to find. Uh, this is a Pro Troll. Uh, and this one it just has that chartreuse stripe on the top with a, like a metallic UV tape on a chrome board. And uh, this one is recently something added to the collection. It's kryptonite. It's a custom color. I've seen it in action. It catches fish and it does have a very unique uh, kind of taping on it that 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 uh, I haven't seen on other colorways. So uh, it's really interesting. It, it feels different. It looks different. Maybe that's what does the trick. But uh, this is kryptonite here. I really like this one and uh, I, I've used it on the boats and stuff, but I'm going to be using it on my setup on the kayak as well. Now, maybe you noticed or maybe you didn't, but for everything that I showed you so far, there's a lot of greens, chromes, uh, chartreuses in my fly uh, in my flasher collection here. What I don't have a lot of is blues and blues are very, very effective. Like blue dragon slayer comes to mind. Uh, there's like blue magic man. Just, there's all kinds of flashes that have blue in it, whether blue and a green or a blue and a chartreuse. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's like anything else. I'm confident in these colors. I know they'll work for me. It's just a high confidence thing. Something that with the blues and I know they work, it just hasn't really connected with me. So when you go out here, look at some of these colors, see what uh, ones you think will, 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 will work for you. Um, you can start off with some of the ones that I mentioned here as, as kind of like standards and then work your way up from there. Next, let's talk about flies because unlike coho rigs where we're using dodgers and little peanut flies and two inch flies with these flashes you're going you're going to want to go bigger with your flies um and typically we're talking about like these howie flies um it's the term that everyone calls the bigger flies there's a lot of different people and companies that make these these bigger four inch flies um howie is the brand that i just have been using forever they're proven they work um and so those are the ones that i have here today uh but these are what you're going to want to use on your flashers, right? The idea here is with the flasher, you're trying to attract bigger fish. And in the summer period, these fish are, are keyed in on bigger baits uh, as opposed to the early season spring. So you're going to want to give them a bigger profile presentation, which is why you're going to go with these bigger flies. Now, you'll notice here, if I grab a couple of these, right? You notice that there's flies on them already. One thing that I do is I take a fly and it's I assign it to one of these flashers, right? I'll pick one out and I'll say, you know what? This is going to go on this one. And it stays on there. I don't change the, the flies out. Now, if you have a small selection of flashers, then yeah, you're probably going to want to do that to kind of switch things up to see if they get in the bite on a different fly. But for me, I have a variety of them. I want the, I want the uh, speed of being able to just take off a flasher, unroll the fly off of it, drop it in the water, and go so all of my flashers have a fly just permanently attached to it and a little quick tip right here you can kind of just roll it around all right you can roll the fly around and they'll usually just stick right on there all right so you just wrap it on there now i can just grab it unroll it drop it in the water and start fishing if i want to switch the flashes out the flies are already there with them um how do you decide what fly goes on what uh you know a lot of it is just kind of eyeing it i look at what the flasher is I kind of look at the flies and I kind of think about what complements uh, each other well. Um, whether it's the colors that are on it uh, and uh, I try to have some level of contrast. So if the 
flasher is one color. I try to have the fly have a little bit of another color just to add a little bit of dif uh, uh, differentiation in it. Um, and some of them are, are not like that. Uh, like my white board here, uh, I've got this white UV uh, Howie fly on here. And it's kind of like an all white kind of a situation going on here. And then on my super frog flasher here, I have the Howie bullfrog color on this one. It pairs really well uh, on this color of uh, uh, flasher. Now, when it comes to the flies, there's really but a handful that I feel um, you really need to have. I mean, they comes in all kinds of colors, different brands have different colorways, but really just there's just a handful that you're going to need to have. And honestly, that's going to be the bullfrog color, which is the color I've talked about right here. Howie bullfrog. Um, you're going to want a little boy blue colorway. It looks like it's clear, but that strands actually reflect a blue light at the, uh, depending on the angle. When you flash it, there's like a blue hue that comes off of the strands, which is really cool. So little boy blue is another really good color uh, fly to have. Um, there's glitter, double aqua. There's green crinkle, which has kind of like um, green with these UV white strands that almost come off as they're kind of gold. Um, try those out. Uh, the Glitter Mirage, which is, this is what I have on my whiteboard, is another good color. And then you've got Glitter Pearl Frog. You really can't go wrong. And you'll notice that when you look at these uh, on the racks, you'll, you'll notice and say, man, they really don't look that much different. A lot of them, basically, uh, the foundational kind of colors are green. And so at first glance, they might not look different, but I'm telling you, each of them is different very subtly. And sometimes that subtle difference in the flies from one strand to another or whatever the case may be could be all the difference in catching fish it's just the way it is so you can't go wrong little boy blue uh, mirage green crinkle um, bullfrog uh, double glitter aqua uh, you can't go wrong with those grab them up tie them up put them on your on your flashers get them into the water now let's let's wrap up this whole kind of uh, video here because I, I hope it's not too long but the way you're going to fish these, let's talk about that quickly. Uh, these are meant to be fished, in my opinion, deeper in the water column. You're going to let your coho rigs work higher in the water. I, I'm putting these at minimum 40 feet down in the water column. Uh, I'm really looking for those fish that are deeper, below the thermocline. Uh, my bigger kings, the bigger coho, I'm really trying to target them. And that's the idea with these bigger flashers, with the bigger size flies, is to get those bigger bites. Uh, because these fish are transitioning and feeding on bigger forage in the water, bigger owl wives and, and, and everything else. So you're going to want to put these down deeper in the water column, all right? Uh, as I always say and recommend, a torpedo diver is one of the best ways in the kayak and effective ways and efficient ways as well to get your presentations down deep into the water. Some folks are using downriggers on their, on their kayaks, more power to you. It's not something I'm, I'm a fan of. Um, so put, put these on your uh, torpedo divers. Uh, the key here though, is you wanna put it about 15 feet back off of the torpedo diver. Don't go longer than that. Uh, the reason for that is the, the farther away it is from your torpedo diver, you're gonna have two issues. One is the further away it is from the weight, uh, the flash is gonna float back up. Because remember, this is catching a lot of water, a lot of resistance in the water, and that resistance is gonna kind of push it up, right? So if you're trying to fish at 50 feet down, and this is the, the, and, and your flasher is 30 feet behind your weight, that presentation is probably not down 50. It's probably up, you know, 40 some, right? Uh, uh, so so keep that in mind. About 15 feet, you can go down to 10 potentially. If you notice you're not getting bit, maybe because they're a little shy. Remember, you got that weight cutting through the water near them. Um, and it might spook them. So about 15 feet, I feel like works really well. Uh, and then you'll set your lines down uh, to the desired depth. Also remember where torpedo divers uh, utilize their depth chart. And remember that when you're, when you're pulling the flasher flies, you're gonna lose some depth because you're getting that drag from the board. So you have to let out a little bit more line to get to that depth than you normally would according to that depth chart. So keep that in mind as well. Put them down there, man. And I'm telling you what, get ready because when they rock the flasher fly down deep, it's going to be a better quality fish. And those are some of the, uh, uh, the most fun to catch in the summer months out on Lake Michigan, especially in your kayak, man. And I hope that this crash course 
on flashes and flies is enough to get you up and running, gives you a better, a better understanding of how to uh, utilize this program into your fishing on Lake Michigan. Uh, try them out, start small, get one or two, get a feel for it, and you can always expand from there. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. If you found this video of value useful, and uh, let me know, hit a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And guys, don't forget you want my detailed fishing reports, access to my Lake Michigan kayak fishing group, or you can meet other folks to go out and fish with, uh, talk to me directly and so much more. Consider uh, supporting through Patreon or through my YouTube memberships. Both of those links are below. And for any and all of the gear that I have, if you're looking for it, you go to my Amazon store, uh, where you can go get those at no additional cost to you. It supports me as an Amazon influencer, and I appreciate all your guys' support. Tight lines, and we'll talk soon.